For this quiz, we're going to be dealing with gas mixtures. And for this, we're going to look at a sample of hydrogen gas that's collected over water at a certain temperature and pressure. And so the first thing we want to think about here is, are we collecting pure hydrogen? You know, there are actually multiple gases that are present in this flask. And the first part of this problem is to identify that explicitly. So this is the apparatus, right? We have some sort of a reaction that bubbles the gaseous product through some water and then into a collection flask. And the upside of this is that we can start with our collection flask completely filled, so we're guaranteed not to have any atmospheric air that's in the flask, but we do need to account for the fact that the gas that we're collecting is not just going to have the hydrogen gas that we collect, but is also going to have water vapor. And this is because the water in the liquid phase wants to leave the liquid phase to a certain extent, and in a closed system like this, it's going to set up a partial pressure within that mixture inside of our collection flask. Again, that mixture being the hydrogen gas that we want to collect and the water vapor that's just naturally a contaminant within this apparatus. Uh, and we need to uh, adjust for its presence. So that's part B, right? Part A is to recognize that we have hydrogen and we have water. Now we want to state the partial pressures of all the gases in the system and keeping in mind that we have this vapor pressure table here as well. So overall, right, we know that we're at 21 degrees and one atmosphere. The vapor pressure of water at 21 degrees Celsius is going to be equal to 18.7 millimeters mercury, or TOR as it's listed here. Remember that those are the same unit, two names for the same unit. Uh, and this is to say that in a closed system, the partial pressure of the water in a system that's collected over water is going to be equal to its vapor pressure, right? It's going to reach equilibrium at that vapor pressure of water for its partial pressure. And therefore, the vapor pressure of water is 18.7 millimeters mercury, and that's also going to be its partial pressure in this collection flask. We get this from the table, right? It depends only on temperature, and at 21 degrees Celsius, it's 18.7 millimeters mercury. The total pressure, denoted as just plain old P, right? So I said first P subscript H2O, that's the partial pressure of water. Big P is the total pressure. pH2, that's the partial pressure of hydrogen. And pH2O, that's again the partial pressure of the water vapor. The total pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. Each gas exerts its own pressure. And we know what the total pressure is. That's the one atmosphere that we collect the sample at. Remember when we were setting a pressure or measuring a pressure, we're generally measuring the total pressure. It's not very easy to measure the partial pressure of a gas directly. Like how can we look into a sample of mixed gas and only pick out the pressure contribution from specific gas particles? Uh, that's, that's very challenging. In general, what we're going to do is know more about the system and calculate the partial pressures that way. We don't know the pressure of the water, of the hydrogen, but we do know the partial pressure of the water from the previous step here. And therefore, we know the pressure of the H2, which to two significant figures here, is going to be 741 millimeters of mercury. And now we have the partial pressure of both gases within the system. Okay, next we want to know what the mole fraction of all the gases in this system are. And let's keep in mind that we have the following pressure data from the previous question, right? We know the pressure of H2, we know the pressure of water, and we know the total pressure. So let's review our mole fraction. I think that the simplest way to relate pressure, partial pressure, and mole fraction is through this equation, right? Uh, the mole fraction of species I times the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of that species. This is to say that if a system is 20% oxygen, oxygen is going to be responsible for 20% of the pressure, right? 20% multiplied by the total pressure gives us the partial pressure of just oxygen. And in this system, it's the same thing, right? If we, we don't know the fraction that is H2 or H2O, but we can relate the fraction through the partial pressure and the total pressure. This is to say that if we know that hydrogen is responsible for 90% of the pressure in the system, then it must be 90% of the gas that's present in the system. And that's shown much more explicitly by rearranging the equation like this. We divide both sides by P, and we see that the mole fraction, or the percentage basically that's in the system, in this case in a fraction between 0 and 1, not a percentage between 0 and 100, is equal to the partial pressure of the species divided by the total pressure. And if we recognize that, we can calculate the mole fractions for both the hydrogen and for the water by taking their partial pressure divided by the total pressure, and we see that it's about 97.5% uh, 
H2, and it's about uh, two and a half ish percent uh, of the, the water. So uh, here now, based only on the partial pressure, which we're able to determine based on the vapor pressure and the total pressure, we know what the composition of this system should be. Final question is saying, well, what if we raise the temperature of the lab? How would the volume in the collection flask change? Keeping in mind that this volume is going to be effectively a fully flexible container, right? The pressure can decrease and increase, and we can basically, you know, adjust so that it's equivalent to atmospheric pressure. So we want to assume that we are able to expand in our system, expand and contract. Uh, otherwise, we're just kind of measuring multiple effects and it gets a bit uh, more muddled. So uh, whenever we want to think about one of these comparison questions, and that's basically what we're comparing. We're comparing an initial state at a lower temperature to a final state at a higher temperature. What are we comparing and what parameters are going to stay constant? Uh, and so if we say this is a fully flexible but closed system, what is constant? And the answer is that it's the pressure and the number of moles, right? We're going to make sure the pressure stays at one atmosphere. That's an isobaric expansion. And we're going to say that the number of moles is also constant as it's also a closed system. Therefore, we want to say, how does the volume change with temperature? And hopefully it makes sense and that you remember that if the temperature should increase, the volume should also increase. And so that's kind of part of the question. But the other question is saying, well, if there's an effect, would it be a small effect or a large effect, right? How much is this going to expand or contract? We've determined that it's going to expand. Temperature increases, the gas wants to expand. But is it gonna like double, triple, 10x, or is it gonna be a fractional increase? We wanna be able to determine the magnitude of this effect. And so if we're looking at the temperature, what we notice is that temperature is only increasing a few degrees. And remember that this is not going from 21 to 25, as if to say about a 20, about a, you know, a 20 percent increase, right? Uh, this is going from the Kelvin temperature to the next Kelvin temperature. So it's going from 294 to 298. And this shows that it's 4 degrees based on about 300 degrees. And that's really like a 1% increase in temperature. And if we see a 1%-ish increase in temperature, we should see about a 1% increase in the volume because they're directly related. Also, note that as we increase the temperature, the vapor pressure of water is also going to be increasing. And if that's true, that'll have an effect as well. But note that the increase in vapor pressure of water is also going to be relatively small. And when we say small, this is to say, what is the pressure of the hydrogen that remains? Because here, you know, initially it was 741 millimeters mercury. And if the vapor pressure of water goes up to about 24 millimeters mercury, then the vapor pressure of the hydrogen is going to be the remainder, right? Which would then be something on the order of 736 millimeters mercury. So it is decreasing a bit, but it's not a big, uh, not a big amount. If the pressure of the hydrogen is also decreasing, then we know that it's going to have to expand because as pressure decreases, and note that the pressure overall is not decreasing, but the pressure of just the hydrogen is going to decrease as we see that it takes up less of the total pressure in the system. And if a gas decreases, it's going to also have to expand. So this is also going to create an expanding effect, but it's going to be a small effect. Neither of these effects are going to be very large. They're just going to be on the order of, you know, a few percentage. And therefore, we could expect our final gas sample to be certainly less than 10% expanded compared to what it was before.